Check out the craziest and most hilarious men's fashion trends from the last 30 years. Number 7. Brompers. Alright, let's be for real. We gotta start with the hottest trend going on right now. Brompers. In May 2017, the internet caught that dude, Cam Newton, in what appeared to be a set of brompers when he was at Coachella. However, it was just a shirt and pair of shorts in the same print. It really roared to life when a small Kickstarter campaign received several times their initial goal of $10,000 after going completely viral. Somehow, some way, it's a clothing item that both trendy Coachella girls and babies both love to wear. And now, apparently, it's a special type of dude, too. Yeah, I can't believe it either. We're talking about rompers. Not your usual flowy ones, but rather a man version of it. I'm not really too sure who to blame. The 2015 NFL MVP and the man who uses cryptic characters to write on his Instagram, or the Kickstarter campaign started up by a bunch of bros. Rompers have long existed and people have been wearing them for decades. Here's a quick history lesson. Rompers appeared in the U.S. in the early 1900s. They were popular as playwear for younger children because people thought they were ideal for movement, so rompers were in many ways the first modern, casual clothes for kids. But have men really worn rompers out in public? I keep on seeing this pic of Sean Connery as James Bond in Goldfinger pic, but let's be for real. Did real dudes in real life really wear this out in public? So, the Romp Him team came on the scene and decided to get dudes to dive into brompers in order to show off all that gym time and be proud being the dude that didn't skip leg day. Anyways, these are just regular old rompers, but tailored to dudes that hit the gym. They come in a wide variety of patterns and colors. I mean, it's not that bad, if I'm going to be for real, but... I think it's just a gimmicky thing that bros are going to wear this summer, and it just identifies you as a bro. If you're into that sort of thing, by all means, it's definitely not as bad as the dudes in the gym I see wearing leggings or meggings to work out in. Come on, dudes. Nobody wants to see that, man. Please, don't wear leggings to the gym. Leave that to the ladies. Number six, backwards clothing. Remember the song Jump by Criss Cross? That was actually the first rap song that stayed on the top of Billboard's Top 100 chart for a total of two months. Also, fun fact, a 19-year-old Jermaine Dupree found Chris and Chris in the mall and turned them into little money-making machines. Because of Criss Cross, dudes started to wear their clothes backwards. Yep, it for sure took a special person to wear their clothes backwards just so they could be fresh. I still remember kids who'd show up to school with clothes on backwards. Of course, much like Criss Cross's time in the spotlight, this trend was short-lived. Maybe it was too much. Maybe it was just plain weird. But the truth is, dressing backwards just couldn't make the cut in the fashion industry. The late Chris Kelly, or AKA Mac Daddy of the group, talked about how they came up with dressing backwards. And he said it was a random idea that they all had come up with. They were all just sitting around thinking of something to do differently when someone just suggested wearing their pants backwards. Even after all those years, Chris Kelly supposedly still wears his pants backwards. And that's why, and whether or not he thought it was comfortable, he said that it was just a way of life for him. And he does it even when he's in a suit. Now that's dedication on another level. Number five, hammer pants slash drop crotch pants. We're going to go back again to the early 90s and talk about parachute pants, a.k.a. hammer pants. The early 90s were a special time, weren't they? These pants were pretty much made famous by MC Hammer. You know, the guy that made Too Legit to Quit and also You Can't Touch This. And oh yeah, pumps and a bump. <laughs> Who could forget that video? Hammer pants were actually inspired by harem pants or harem trousers, which are baggy, long pants brought in at the ankle. Hammer said that he started wearing pants like this because the drop crotch gave him the freedom to dance and jump and move however he wanted to. He also said that he wore them because they had a bit of a dramatic flair in them. You move, then the pants move a little bit afterwards. I personally never wore Hammer pants, but hey, I'll take his word for it. So, how about them modified Hammer pants now? Yeah, I'm talking about the drop crotch pants. 
This weird concoction came to answer the prayers of all men wanting to dress and look like Yeezy and Bieber while wanting people to know that it was Yeezy and Biebs that they were trying to look like. These little gems have a super low and large crotch even if it pulled all the way up. Hmm, I guess it feels comfortable, but for sure it just looks, I'm just going to say, interesting. You know what? If you're a dude into wearing leggings, first of all, slap yourself in the face three times and see if that helps. If not, at least consider the drop crotch megging. If you get that super tight skinny leg feeling, but people don't have to see the curves of your ass and dick at the same time. Number four, super deep V. Everyone owns a white t-shirt, whether it's a V-neck or a crew neck. A white shirt will never go out of style. They go with everything and you can wear it in a whole bunch of different situations. However, as always, fashion evolves. Certain dudes definitely are the type to change up their look a little bit. Who knows when the deep v-neck trend really started? Maybe in the mid-2000s? Maybe in the late 2000s? Whatever. All you need to really know is that v-neck shirts became all the rage. And then, there were those dudes who took deep v's to the next level. I mean, I understand that you want to show off all those hours you put in on the incline bench, but come on, let's have a little taste here. Jude Law was spotted grocery shopping with a super low-cut shirt, and paparazzi fun ensued. Hey, dude, looks like he's been working out, so he had to show off his titty meat, but let's save it for the beach, how about that? Anyways, I'm not saying don't wear a v-neck, but come on, man. Anybody want to see man nips? Just be sensible with a v-neck. And people already can tell whether you're in shape or not without a deep suit. You'll look much cooler when it looks like you're hardly trying instead of looking like you're trying way too hard. Number three, tall t-shirts. Remember back in the 90s and early 2000s when people wore everything baggy? From baggy jeans to baggy shirts to baggy suits. Yeah, I get it. I did it too. It was just the look back then. But what I'm talking about here isn't just the, I guess, normal baggy shirt from back then. I'm talking about the super baggy shirt that was also an extra long t-shirt. This was the era when anyone named Mike Jones wished they weren't named Mike Jones. And we first remembered Rick James again because of the Chappelle show. Oh yeah, uh, let's not forget this was the time when Pitbull was just Pitbull before he was Mr. Worldwide. These super long tees that reach to the knees and sometimes even past the knees probably hit a peak in 2004 or 2005. They were usually worn just a few times before they were thrown out and were inspired by the and one basketball players, local hood drug dealers, and of course, many rappers. I mean, so many people were just wearing oversized white tees, it got to the point where shirts were banned at a lot of bars and clubs. These long white tees were pretty much almost every rapper's look at one point or another. So many dudes wore huge white tees that some neighborhoods uh, started looking like giant toga parties. Some even took the trend further, wearing shirts that almost reached the floor. <sighs> well, tall tees have seemed to come back, although this time the trend is a bit more muted and fitted at least. I think we can all agree when I say that this look is much better than the first time. Number two, man prees. What's up with the thing with renaming everything even remotely targeted to men with some sort of cheesy pun in order to market it? Megging, man cleavage, brompers. Do they think dudes won't want to buy it if it doesn't have a specific gender name stamped onto it? Absolutely. That should be a clue to these dudes. There's a little voice in the back of your mind that's asking you, do you really want to wear this? The answer is probably no. Anyway, you've probably heard of this one. It's the Man Pre. Obviously, as you can tell by the oh so clever name, these are capris, but for men. Initially marketed as long shorts, these became relatively famous in the 90s and early 2000s, which actually weren't as bad as they are as the tight capris on dudes today, I, I guess. These super long shorts were typically made of synthetic fabrics such as polyester or nylon and usually also had cargo pockets. Remember that there were also the super long jean shorts that were popular for a little while that also looked ridiculous. Come on, who wants to wear shorts that's almost down to your ankles? Cam Newton tried to bring it in the 
tight Capri look for men all by his lonesome self a while back. Although, I'd say Rusty Westbrook tried as well. Phew, these dudes are pretty cool in my book, but sometimes I still wonder about them. Number one, super tight pants that show off a little too much. Right now, the current look is fitted. I can't hate on that. That look is always going to be in, as properly fitted clothing will forever look good. But as always, there are always certain people to take it to that next level. You know how Jay-Z is rapped that he can't wear skinny jeans because his uh, nuts won't fit? Yeah, basically this. This is for all the dudes out there that try to show off their package way too much. Besides science proving that super tight jeans can cause low sperm count by pressing in the boys, Let's not go into the pain these guys go through having to tell their mom they wear nut-hugging jeans. These dudes may be willing to make certain sacrifices for style, but is it really worth it leaving people disgusted all around? Now, I'm not talking about fitted or even skinny jeans in general, but dudes for sure should not wear them tight enough to leave a very specific Frank and Beans imprint. Also, just in general, not everyone can pull off a fitted or skinny look. Sometimes it just doesn't look right on certain people. It's not a weight thing either, because even if you're naturally thin, super skinny jeans can still emphasize some pencil-thin legs. Ah, fashion, it never ends. Here's what's next. Do you feel like your selfie game is strong enough? You think you got your duck face, Snapchat dog ears, and face swaps down? You think millennials were the first to take selfies? Well, think again, because I've got a newsflash for you, Walter Cronkite. Selfies and selfie sticks have been around.